His parents lived at the right end of it. After number 39, the quality of the houses dropped very suddenly, and 64 had not even a separate servant's entrance. But at the present moment the whole road looked rather pretty, for the sun had just set in splendor, and the inequalities of rent were drowned in a saffron afterglow. Small birds twittered, and the breadwinner's train shrieked musically down through the cutting, that wonderful cutting which has drawn to itself the whole beauty out of Surbiton, and clad itself, like any alpine valley, with the glory of the fir and the silver birch and the primrose. It was this cutting that had first stirred desires within the boy, desires for something just a little different. He knew not what, desires that would return whenever things were sunlit, as they were this evening, running up and down inside him, up and down, up and down, till he would feel quite unusual all over, and as likely as not would want to cry. This evening he was even sillier, for he slipped across the road towards the signpost and began to run up the blank alley. The alley runs between high walls, the walls of the gardens of Ivanhoe and Bella Vista, respectively. It smells a little all the way, and is scarcely twenty yards long, including the turn at the end. So not unnaturally, the boy soon came to a standstill. I'd like to kick that, Shelley, he exclaimed, and glanced idly at a piece of paper which was pasted on the wall. Rather an odd piece of paper, and he read it carefully before he turned back. This is what he read. S and C R C C. Alteration in service. Owing to lack of patronage, the company are regretfully compelled to suspend the hourly service and to retain only the sunrise and sunset omnibuses, which will run as usual. It is to be hoped that the public will patronize an arrangement which is intended for their convenience. As an extra inducement, the company will, for the first time, now issue return tickets, available one day only, which may be obtained of the driver. Passengers are again reminded that no tickets are issued at the other end, and that no complaints in this connection will receive consideration from the company, nor will the company be responsible for any negligence or stupidity on the part of the passengers, nor for hailstorms, lightning, loss of tickets, nor for any act of God, for the direction. Now he had never seen this notice before, nor could he imagine where the omnibus went to. S, of course, was for Surbiton, and RCC meant road car company. But what was the meaning of the other C? Coombe and Malden, perhaps? Or possibly City? yet it could not hope to compete with the Southwestern. The whole thing, the boy reflected, was run on hopelessly unbusinesslike lines. Why not tickets from the other end? And what an hour to start! Then he realized that unless the notice was a hoax, an omnibus must have been starting just as he was wishing the bonzes goodbye. He peered at the ground through the gathering dusk, and there he saw what might or might not be the marks of wheels. Yet nothing had come out of the alley, and he had never seen an omnibus at any time in the Buckingham Park Road. No, it must be a hoax, like the signpost, like the fairy tales, like the dreams upon which he would wake suddenly in the night. And with a sigh he stepped from the alley right into the arms of his father, 